SRC pumps. And we're in 501 Alliance, where we have a, uh, a large system set up here. We have 18 15 ton water to water heat pumps. They get their energy from the earth. Because in the backyard, back parking lot, we have 73 holes in the ground. Each hole is 630 feet deep. So in each hole, we have one pipe going down, a U bend at the bottom, and we come right back up. In the wintertime, we absorb the heat out of the earth. And in the summertime, we take the heat from the building and we reject it back to the earth. Each one of these units, it's got a compressor, uh, and eight seven and a half ton water coils, uh, four on the demand side, four on the earth energy side. We have full meter. Will show us what the flow is. Here we've got, in this particular unit, we've got 50 gallons going back to the earth. So these units will all work independently based on how much heat is required in the building, how many air handlers. So in this particular building, we don't have heat pumps throughout the building. All the heat pumps are located in this one room, but throughout the building, we have air handlers. It's a four pipe system, with two pipes for cooling supply, cooling return, and heating supply, heating return. So you can have two air handlers in close proximity. One could be heating, the other could be cooling. All the heat pumps are manufactured by my company, Polar Bear Water Source Heat Pumps. The Armstrong pumps here are manufactured obviously by Armstrong. And this is a, a 25 horsepower pump, which then pumps the water through the earth, back to the heat pumps and back to the earth again. We're really 90% cooling almost year round in this building because of the shape of the building, a square, so it's not a long, thin building. It's a very square building, so it creates a lot of internal heat. Now over here, at the moment, we have uh, four 200 gallon hot water tanks. But if we look up to the ceiling, we see red and blue lines everywhere. Well, each heat pump has a desuperheater in it. Well, what a desuperheater does, which is that device right there, it steals the hottest heat coming off the compressor and we can bring our domestic hot water up to as high as 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 65, 70 degrees Celsius. So even the hot water from the building comes from the earth. Because we're a cool dominant, which means we need to do more heating. So we've got ice melt in the front sidewalks, uh, on the rear ramp going into the basement, and this is gonna be operational this fall. So we will steal some of the heat that we would normally put into the building, and it goes out through here, through pipes in the basement, to the, so to speak, in-floor tubing or in-cement tubing to keep all the sidewalks clean, and in doing so, we get a more balanced system between heating and cooling. This is the, the tubing, or the main header tubing, for both the supply and the return pipes for the 73, 630 foot holes that are in the backyard. Through these pipes, we'll have as much as 1,100 to 1,500 gallons per minute flow through these pipes and into the 73 holes that are in the backyard uh, for where we both absorb and or discharge uh, the heat from the earth. Again, this is the ice melt. at 501 Alliance, uh, we actually have heating and cooling in the entire basement uh, or the parking garage 
of, of five oil lights. So rarely do you see garages that have both heating and cooling. And the biggest reason we wanted, not that it gets that cold in the winter down here, but we wanted additional heating uh, to balance out the overall system uh, in terms of the geothermal and how we utilize the ground loop. Offices of A Plus Creative, and in their particular offices, just as an example, we're showing the air handlers that the 18, 15 ton units in the basement are delivering either the heating or the cooling through forced air ductwork. It's, it's an open concept, the ductwork is visible, it's a much cleaner look, a much healthier look, and all the heat and the cooling that these air handlers produce heat energy or cool energy from the earth. Obviously we're still getting things totally going here, um, but to this point in time, um, most people are very, very happy to be in a very, very green building, an extremely clean building, and a building that is excellent to work in. This is a, an electrical panel we're building for a water-to-water -water heat pump. Now, what's hugely different the way Polar Bear does things is instead of relying heavily on circuit boards and computers, which do tend to fail a lot, and when they do fail, nobody can fix them. Now you're going to wait two or three weeks for the part. Here in Polar Bear, yes, we do have one little um, anti short cycle relay and lockout, and even it can be easily bypassed. And we don't, it, even on a phone call, I can have somebody make pull two wires, join them together, and we're not out if this ever fails. But everything in here, any service repairman who is able to look at a schematic can very quickly figure out what's going on and easily make repairs. Um, for the most part, there's nothing in this box except for the soft start that's more than $45. And therefore, all of this can be kept in a serviceman's truck in terms of any parts or pieces if necessary. Having said that, these relays are grossly oversized for the work they're actually doing and in 800 systems and over 30 years of having heat pumps in, I think I've replaced four relays in that period of time. So the polar bear units are extremely reliable. Um, all the wires, as opposed to other units in which they've all got one color, every, all our wires, all our systems are color-coded, red for resident power, white for common, yellow for compressors, we haven't done the blue wire yet for fan motor, uh, brown for emergency heat, um, black for uh, Y2, uh, a second stage compressor. Uh, we use uh, finger safe uh, fuses now so that they're totally safe. We even have a soft start, so instead of the compressor starting instantly, it starts up over two seconds. And over that two second period, we see very, the, the amp draw is considerably less. Therefore, much easier on the compressor, much easier on the contact. In fact, the soft start should extend the life of a compressor by anywhere from three to five years, just because it's not seeing the high amperage on startup. And, I guess the other big thing you can't tell here, and perhaps in a different video, you'll see that all of our, all of our uh, electrical diagrams, they're not in where the compressor is. They're on the side panel or up top so that it's easy to work on. And if you ever had to work underneath the unit or where the compressor was and the, the refrigeration system, you're not hampered by having an electrical system in there as well. So ergonomically, the polar bear system is far superior to any other unit in the marketplace. Here's a, another air handler here on the fourth floor of the building. It's, it's an open space at the moment. Uh, Elections Canada happens to be in here for the, the election uh, of, 19, of 2019. And uh, it, it is providing a, a nice environment for those who work here. This is called a BKM. What it is, it's a massive air heat exchanger. And on one side, 
We have a set of plates here, heat exchangers. They're about four feet long, a foot by foot, full of aluminum plates, and the same thing down there. Every 70 seconds, we change the airflow. For the first 70 seconds, we discharge the heat from the building, and these plates absorb this heat. But 70 seconds later, there's a big door that changes inside. Instead of pushing out heat or expelling heat, we draw in the cold air and pick up the heat. So it's a heat recovery ventilator, so, so to speak. But instead of a small one for a home, this is for a 370,000 square foot building. And we use no fossil fuels. You have obviously electricity from the fan motors to move the air. But other than that, we're 90% efficient at minus 30 degrees. That's how good this particular heat exchanger is. So along with the solar panels, the, the environmental um, heat exchanger, air exchanger here for fresh air into the building, uh, the geothermal in the building, and just the whole concept of the way we're doing things in the building where polar bear is located, because we actually manufacture in this building as well, complete package in terms of what we're looking for going forward environmentally.